All right, Shalom, Shalom. All praises, honor, and glory. It goes to Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shai Bahashem, Rakak Kadash. Double honor to the apostles, double honor to the elders of Great Millstone. Yahweh Bashim Yahusha, break a thumb to the whole full elect. Shalom, Shalom. Today's video will be entitled The Gullah Indians are a preview to what will happen in these last days. And uh, before I get into the lesson, you know, this week, you know, because today is Sunday and I probably won't post this video till Monday. But today is Sunday. Um, this marks the beginning of the week of Thanksgiving, which we all know is uh, always the last Thursday of the month in November. But, you know, usually, you know, we may, you know, do our thing as far as putting out prophecy lessons. And then we may do a a thanks thanks killing, <laughs> as we call it, do a thanks killing lesson. But I want to do something this, different this week. You know, this week I'm going to just do a lot of uh, history lessons going into the Northern Kingdom. Uh, but also, you know, going into the uh, the uh, atrocities that the so-called white people committed, you know, to our people. So we all have a better understanding because when we, when we speak of the white men in the past, we say, yeah, they, they did a lot of rape, robbery and murder. But there's there's details of that. There's stories of that. There's accounts of that. So. You know, this week I want to dedicate, I want to dedicate this week to just, you know, doing a lot of history lessons. Uh, you know, today we're going to start off with the Gullah Wars, you know, eventually Lord willing through the spirit. We're going to cover the Trail of Tears. We're going to go into in detail of Andrew Jackson and, you know, any, any other topics that may come through, through the spirit, man. But, you know, today we're going to focus on here. I got an article. This is from Yale. It says the Gullah, Rice, Slavery and the Sierra Leone. American connection. Black Seminoles, Gullahs who escaped from slavery. You see? So brothers and sisters who don't know that, you know, all all Jakes didn't didn't just sit back and let slavery slavery happen to them going into the uh southern kingdom. There's Jakes who fled and joined and joined forces with with members of the northern kingdom, more specifically the the Reubenites. And it also could be a mix of Gadites as well. But, you know, we're going to keep it in, keep it basic. You know, there is there is Negroes, members of the tribe of Judah and, you know, other Southern Kingdom members, you know, who fled to Florida. You see now, because Florida is such a, a tourist attraction, Florida is filled with fucking Edomites. <laughs> but really, the roots, the roots and the origin of that land in Florida was was a safe haven for our people, man. So let's get into it. It says black black Seminoles, Gullahs who escaped from slavery. The black Seminoles are a offshoot of the Gullah who escaped from the rice plantations in South Carolina and Georgia. They built their own settlements on the Florida frontier, fought a series of wars to preserve their freedom and were scattered across North America. They have played a significant role in American history, but they have never received the recognition they deserve. It says some Gullah slaves managed to escape from coastal South Carolina and Georgia into the Florida Peninsula. Like I said, not all Jakes just just sat there and let and let the so-called white man beat on them and, and oppress them. You know, Jake still had that spirit of rebellion and they knew that Florida was was not was not and was not occupied by the white people at that time so it says some gullah managed to escape the f from the coastal south carolina and georgia south into the florida peninsula in the 18th century florida was a vast tropical wilderness covered with jungles and malaria ridden swamps the spanish claimed florida but they had used it only as a buffer between the british colonies and their own settlement territories farther south you know going into the caribbean islands so that was that was a buffer from them because you know the original 13 colonies the fur the far the, the furthest south that it would go was the state of georgia so it says they use it only as a buffer between the british colonies and their own settled territories farther south they wanted to keep florida as a dangerous wilderness frontier so they offered a refuge to escaped slaves and a renegade indians from neighboring south carolina and georgia you see so the spanish you know allowed allowed jake to to dwell there safely because they know that 
it would create a buffer between them and the English colonies, which <laughs> as the scriptures say, you know, if Satan be divided against Satan, his kingdom shall shall not stand because these Edomites supposed to be on one accord, but they weren't, you know, they were all trying to trying to have their own self interest involved. So it says the Gullahs were establishing their own free settlements in the Florida wilderness by at least the late 1700s. They built separate villages of thatch roof houses surrounded by fields of corn and swamp rice, and they maintained friendly relations with the mixed population of refugee Indians. That's why I say it could be a mixture of, of Gadites, you know, mixture of Native American, um, Native American tribes, but also it was also a majority of Reubenites, those of the Seminole Indians. It says they built separate villages of thatched roof houses surrounded by fields of corn and swamp rice, and they maintained friendly relations with the mixed population of refugee Indians. In time, the two groups came to view themselves as parts of the same loosely organized tribe. You see, and that goes into the lesson or the title of the lesson. You know, the Gullah Indians was a preview to what's going to come today, because now Although we have different features as far as, you know, Negroes, Latinos, Native Americans, we are having the true understanding that we are of the same nation. We are the same people. So it says the two groups came to view themselves as parts of the same loosely organized tribe in which blacks, I'm going to say Judites, in which Judites held important positions of leadership. The Gullahs adopted Indian clothing while the Indians acquired a taste for rice and appreciation for Gullah music and folklore. <laughs> See, so so, you know, the Northern Kingdom had Northern Kingdom had had the drip, you know, it say the Gullahs adopted Indian clothing, but the Southern Kingdom had the food and the flavor, man. So it say Indians acquired a taste for rice and appreciation for Gullah music and folklore. So, you know, once again, we when we all come together. You know, there's there's really nothing that that these so-called white people can do because we we complement one one another, man. It say, but the it say, but the Gullahs were physically more suited to tropical climate and possessed the indispensable knowledge of tropical ag agriculture. And without their assistance, the Indians would not have been able to cope effectively with the Florida environment. The two groups led an independent life in the wilderness of northern Florida, rearing several generations of children in freedom. So, yeah, they were they were mixing together. You know, the 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 southern kingdom man was getting with the northern kingdom woman and, you know, the northern kingdom man was getting with the uh, southern kingdom woman. So it said. Uh, the two groups led an independent life in the wilderness of northern Florida, rearing several generations of children in freedom. And they recognized the American settlers and slave owners as their common enemy. <laughs> Once again, going back to the title of the lesson. This was a preview. The Gullahs was a preview to what is going to pass today. Because now, you know, through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bashim Yashai, the black, Hispanic, and Native American men are realizing that we have the same common enemy. You know, it is the American settlers and slave owners today. Who are who are the Edomites, so-called white people today, man? Let's read that part again. The two groups led the independent life in the wilderness of northern Florida, rearing several generations of children in freedom, and they recognized the American settlers and slave owners as their common enemy. The Americans called the Florida Indians Seminoles. So you see, that's that's really an American term. It says the Americans called the Florida Indian Seminoles from the Spanish word Cimarron, meaning wild or untamed. And because we know, you know, the Reubenites, they they are of of the warrior class of Israel, man. So it's very hard to overtake them because they have that warrior spirit. That's why they named them that. And they called runaway Gullah Seminole Negroes or Indian Negroes. Modern historians have called these Gullah frontiersmen the Black Seminoles. The Seminole settlements in Spanish Florida increased more as increased as more and more runaway slaves and renegade Indians escaped south. And conflict with the American was sooner or later inevitable. Why? Because because they couldn't have a full a full of a full state 
of Negroes and Latin or, you know, a hey, northern kingdom and southern kingdom together, man. They couldn't have a full state of that. They had to put it into that because they obviously knew what happened to the French in Haiti. And they couldn't afford that to happen because once once they had control of Florida, you know, they, they would have enough resources to fight from south to north you know going from florida going to georgia south carolina so they they had no choice but but to put that out man but it says the seminal